everyone and welcome to our YouTube channel, Mom's the Word. I'm Eva Danielle and this is my son, Gabe. Say hi, Gabe. No Tyrannosaurus Okay, he's a T-Rex again, so say hi, Tyrannosaurus Rex. No. Oh, okay. I don't want to see it. That's okay. So today we're going to be coming to you guys, talking to you about some of my favorite fresh juice recipes. Um, way back when, when I had a little bit more time before becoming a full-time mommy to this T-Rex, I used to do a lot of um, fresh juicing with vegetables and fruit. And so I kind of want to get back to that and I just thought I'd share two of my favorite recipes um, for juicing with you guys. So if you've ever thought about juicing, you do juice, um, feel free to leave your comments in the box below and um, stay tuned and we'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, say bye-bye. Bye. So the first thing I wanted to do was show you guys what type of juicer I use. And it's a slow masticating juicer by Omega. I'm not sure if they still make this model, but the model that I'm using is model 8006. And this is the front of the box. And I actually purchased it from Bed Bath Me on about four years ago. Here's the back of the box. And it just shows you what it looks like from the packaging. And it does have a 15 year warranty, which is why I went with it. Here's what it looks like unboxed. Um, I've shown you all the pieces. Um, obviously the pieces in the front we do not need to use for the juicing, but just wanted to show you guys what all comes with it. So for our first juicing recipe, we're going to be juicing the fruits and vegetables that you see here. We have cucumber, beets, apple, lemon, celery, and kale. Don't they look yummy? For our second juicing recipe, what we're going to be juicing is pineapple, ginger and carrots so simple and sweet um, but very tasty as well the next thing i wanted to show was a few items needed to complete the juicing process a knife some glass jars and a bowl to hold the cut items so the next thing we're going to be showing here is the cutting process and as i said before some additional tools you're going to need are a cutting board a sharp knife and a bowl in which to put your cut fruit and vegetables so the main thing right here it's pretty self-explanatory is making sure that you cut the items and make them small enough to fit down the chute of your juicer obviously if you make them too wide or too long they're not going to fit and you're not going to be able to juice or juice properly so you want to make sure you take your time and you cut and this is probably going to be the most time consuming of the process in making sure that you cut the pieces small enough and um, get them um, cut well enough to go in the juicer so that you can extract all the juices from either the fruit or the vegetables. So you put the cut ones in the bowl and then next you're going to see here I'm actually cutting up an apple and the biggest thing you want to make sure with the apples is that you steer clear of the seeds. Um, the seeds actually do contain traces of cyanide and you want to make sure that you don't put them in your juices. So even if it's not um, hazardous to your health, they contain a very bitter taste and so you don't want that to end up in your juices. So again, you're making small cuts and making sure that um, all your pieces are small enough to fit down the chute of the juicer. I'm going to do the celery as well and what you'll notice is that I'm kind of omitting the leaves um, only because of what I've noticed is that it's kind of very hard to extract juice from them and it tends to clog up the juicer. So I'm kind of sticking to the stalk and the hard parts that can easily be pressed and made into juice. Um, you also see that what I'm doing here is I'm cutting the root of the beet. Some people choose to use the leaves, but I myself choose to just juice the, the root of the beet. And that's the thing that we're most um, familiar with. Um, it is red in color and it's actually kind of hard to cut. So I'm kind of having to use a little bit of my strength, but again, making sure that you get small pieces, small enough to fit down the chute of the juicer. A little bit of ginger, a little bit goes a long way. I've also got my kale. And last but not least, this is how the finished product of all the items cut looks. So here we're actually um, going through the juicing process. What you see here is that I have put a few pieces of the fruits and vegetables inside of the chute and I'm pushing it down with the plunger. Sometimes you need the plunger, sometimes you don't, just depending on what you're juicing. Um, it kind of needs a little bit of help. Next, what you're going to see is I'm going to put um, a soft leafy vegetable. In this case, it's going to be kale. I'm going to put it down the chute, but most importantly, I'm going to follow it up with a more firm a vegetable or fruit in this case apple and what it's going to do is it's going to help to push the kale through a lot easier and make um, the juicing process a lot easier so a lot of times when you have these soft leafy vegetables you need to follow it up with something more firm um, in this case it will be a piece of apple or a piece of beet and like i said it kind of makes it go down the chute a little easier and also go through the masticator um, a lot better in order to yield great juicing results 
So again, I put that in there and I followed up with a piece of the beet or a piece of the apple um, and that allows it to be juiced. So again, pretty self-explanatory, just putting the pieces in there and you're going to complete this until all of the pieces that you're cut have been juiced and then that's going to give you your finished product. So we're putting that in there using the plunger to kind of push it down a little bit more. And as you can see on the right, you have the pulp that's gonna be coming out. And then you have the juice that's actually straining through the strainer and being collected at the bottom. Here we have our lemon and our ginger, and I like to do this last so that it doesn't take over uh, the entire taste of the juice because these are very powerful. So again, I put those in last, and this is what you see happening. There's the pulp coming out. The juice is being sent through the strainer and being collected at the bottom. Here's the finished product. You see the pulp that's been gone through the strainer. You also see the pulp um, that's coming out the other end. And what I like about this is that it's very dry and you get all that yummy, nutritious juice. Here's the finished product. This is by using about 75% of that whole bowl and this is about 24 ounces. And you're gonna do it until it's complete. Next, you're gonna see me cutting um, up the carrots for our next juice recipe and that's going to be the carrot pineapple and ginger so once again the name of the game is to kind of get the pieces cut into as small pieces as possible in order to fit through the um, shoot of the juicer here i have the pineapple and i'm sure that there's probably an easier way to cut it but what works best for me is by cutting it in circles and then what you're actually going to go through and do after you cut it into circles is to then cut around and remove the rind. Now, because I'm not actually chewing this, it doesn't have to be exactly perfect. But like I said, what works for me is to cut it in circles and then go ahead and cut around and remove the rind and then take that circle and then cut it in small pieces in order to put inside the juicer. So again, our strainer is gonna take off um, a lot of that stuff that you see there that you wouldn't normally like to eat. And this is what it looks like going through the juicer. So as you can see, most of that pulp is coming out on the right-hand side. That's the pulp of the carrot and the pineapple. And we're just gonna continue to push that through until we've gone through the entire bowl. And again, we're going to do a little bit of ginger last because I don't want it to overpower um, the taste of the juice which is gonna be really sweet already because of the pineapple that we've put in. And you can sometimes add orange to it. I like to add oranges to it sometimes, but this time I just chose to go with carrot, pineapple, and a little bit of ginger. So uh, simple and sweet, but very effective. So again, that's what it looks like. I did wanna loop around to show you what it sounds like as you're juicing. So not the loudest, but also not extremely quiet. Next, we have the finished product after juicing all of the fruits and veggies. And as you can see, we yielded about 36 ounces for each batch. Hi everyone, just wanted to come back with a quick recap of um, our juicing video. So as I said before, when we first started, I used to juice avidly and that was before I became a wife and a mother. However, my schedule was still quite busy because I was a flight attendant. And not only did I fly domestically, but I flew internationally as well. And so having the time and the energy to eat as healthy as I should have been eating often became um, extremely hard and so what I found was that if I had an off day and I took about an hour to an hour and a half to cut up my fruits and veggies I then could juice and take those juices with me on trips and kind of have a um, healthier alternative than some of the fast foods I was eating and some of the airport food that I was eating. Now by no means am I saying that um, juicing is a complete substitute for eating your fruits and your veggies, but if you're like me and you are very short on time, and also if you're like me and you know that you are more likely to drink something than you are to eat it, then I think that juicing can be a wonderful um, supplement to uh, healthy eating. Um, like I said before, I really want to get back into it. And so I just wanted to come to you guys today to kind of share two of my favorite recipes and kind of how I get them done. So I feel like I'm getting on the right path. Um, I'm by no means saying that I am a uh, completely nutritionally whole mama. I'm getting there because I do know how much um, 
being healthy means not only to myself, but in order for me to be here for my husband and my children, I need to do better and be healthy. So I feel like juicing um, is going to be a nice segue into that and maybe it can be a good segue for you. Now, I also realize that some people may get turned off by what they deem is uh, expensive in order to buy so much fruit and so much veggies to get what they look at as a small amount to consume. However, if you like me, you know what the cost of a value meal is. I can honestly say I partake in a lot of um, Senior King, otherwise known as Burger King. And so I know um, that for the value meal that I like to partake in, it's pretty expensive. And so when you um, compare that to the cost of fruits and veggies, because we're not really thinking about the cost of fruits and veggies of being as expensive as they are, people get kind of turned off. However, I would almost um, bet that if you were to average up the amount of um, money that you're spending on eating and dining out, um, particularly with fast foods, based on what you're spending on these fresh fruits and veggies and what you can juice with, you're probably going to see that it costs more to eat unhealthy than it does to eat healthy. And like I said, um, it's a growing process for me. It's still a learning process for me, but I feel like by doing this, I can at least get on the path um, to being right. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is based on all of the fruits and veggies that you did see that I did purchase and I did cut up, I was able to yield a, a pretty good amount um, of fresh juice. So particularly for the pineapple and carrot recipe, I was able to get about 36 ounces of fresh juice. And obviously this jar isn't 36 ounces, but I just wanted to show for demonstration purposes that this is one full jar and I had another smaller jar um, that all the juice went in. Um, for the beetroot recipe, again, I was able to yield about 36 ounces using the taller jar um, and then a smaller jar. And you can buy these jars from Walmart to Michaels to your local grocery store. Um, these jars are made by Ball and they use the wide mouth ones. And this particular one holds 24 ounces, but they do have some that hold eight ounces as well. And they are glass jars. And what I found is that I'm able to preserve the life of the fresh juice a lot more and a lot longer in a glass jar versus plastic. And I've also found that when I've tried to store them in plastic, my juices tend to have a plasticky, if that's the word, yeah plasticky taste um to it and so i found that um my juices taste better and they taste fresher and they last longer when i store them in glass jars and i do believe you can store fresh juices for up to seven days in the refrigerator um and so you know you can drink them at your leisure or you can drink them you know all in one time but for me um, I kind of try to juice in bulk at the beginning of the week and that way I'll have them um, for the remainder of the week um, something else I like to note is that I didn't put it on film but in between me going from the beetroot recipe to the pineapple carrot recipe I did rinse the parts that are responsible for juicing in the juicer I did rinse them out and the reason for that is they have two very distinct tastes the two recipes do and so if i didn't rinse the parts out then that kind of would have mingled the two and i didn't want that to happen the only part i didn't rinse out was the container responsible for holding the pulp and of course i didn't need to do that because i wasn't going to eat the pulp now um if you saw the pulp what a lot of people like to do is if you're into com composting you can compost the pulp I don't do that, however, that is an option. Some people have taken the pulp, depending on what juice recipe you're doing, and they've made it into pancakes and other things um, to incorporate the pulp, um, which contains a lot of the fiber that is good for you. Um, they actually do things with the pulp. So that's an option for you. Again, like I said, I'm just kind of getting back into it, and I'm sure as I go along and start to learn more and do more as far as juicing, that I'll be able to find um, good ways in which to use the pulp as well. Um, the other thing I like to note is that when you're using um, fresh ginger and lemon, I tend to put those through the juicer last because um, they do have very strong taste. And so for me, what I've found is that when I put them in last, it doesn't 
overpower the overall taste of the juice so again with the fresh ginger root a little bit definitely goes a long way if you're one of those people that like it hot and spicy then by all means but for me I just kind of like a little kick um, and it makes my juices taste a lot better the same thing with lemon it does have a very strong taste so if you juice it last then it kind of gives it just a little um, infusion in there versus taking over the whole juice so those are my takeaways. Um, as I come up with more recipes or I find more recipes, I'll be more than happy to share them with you guys. I hope this uh, review slash tutorial was very informative. And as always, if you guys have any questions or suggestions, you can always put them in the comments box below. And again, thank you guys for watching. Please be sure to like and subscribe and tell a friend. And um, we'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.